Welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Yuno. Today we're going to be talking about interstellar logistics, interplanetary logistics. Mainly we're going to be talking about docks. Now what do I mean when I say a dock? Now I'm referring to the real life thing. You'll see it on the side of warehouses and such. They look like a disc. You'll see the trucks pull up to the back. They get loaded, offloaded, cargo goes in and out. That good stuff. That's what I'm referring to when I say the word dock. Because there is a couple different meanings. Especially with the, uh, similar to a port, that is also a dock. I'm not going to get too much into that. But what I want to talk about is how we are going to be utilizing these logistics stations as our docks for our planets. Fix these real quickly. Just so I can always have the settings that I have on always have the max charge rate up. I always allow space warpers even when it's nice and close and drones vessels 100%. So when I'm talking about docks in Dyson Sphere program, specifically it's going to be these logistic stations has to be the interstellar ones and they are going to be uh, supplying and demanding all of the remote goods. And specifically, these aren't going to do anything else. They're not going to have any factories attached to them. They're just going to be supplying and demanding goods. And then all of the factories and whatnot going on on your planet, these are only going to be local. And what's going to happen here is they'll send stuff about each other as they need to, whether it's a mining planet, a factory plant, whatever they need to do. And then when stuff needs to go out and come in, it goes to your logistic stations that are going to be your docks. And you might be thinking, okay, well, why do I want to do this? Why can't I just bring it straight in here? And you can, and there's nothing wrong with this early in the game. You just have to go and check each and every one of these individually and say, hey, is this one working? Hey, is this one working? This and that. And what this will actually do is it'll consolidate all of those different factories or smelteries or whatever it may be into a single point where you can look at it and say hey do i have lots of iron ingots do i have lots of copper ingots you can check all the items coming and going all in this one convenience location so i have three kind of like uh setups here that's really going to show off why this is a really useful thing to do on all of your planets but before i jump into that i really want to touch on placement where you should place your docks now this is definitely personal preference to a certain degree but the biggest thing is you should have them all together all in a line in somewhere where you know where they're going to be and always in the same place on every planet and that way when you come to your planet you say hey this way is north so that means my docks are going to be this spot wherever that spot might be for you whatever works for you for me it's right above the uh, equator section in this first tropic on this line. And I always do the same thing, except for on my home planets where this very first one I put down, it'll be bringing in stuff like concrete, solar panels, space warpers. And then this one is going to be the only one bringing in these kinds of things. And it usually doesn't have the heavy hitter items like the iron cup, whatever that's going to be going. This is just going to be kind of a more of a stagnant one. And you don't have to do this. This is just personal preference. When I'm paving a planet, when I first get there, I like to just bring in the concrete right away. But and then something else I really love to do is I will send the space warpers out on a belt. You can achieve this by just going in and selecting option six and that's specifically the space warpers in here not these you'll notice that even on one of these where it's not in one of my slots i can still spend send the space warpers out to the next one and then you've got extra slots five slots in all of them except for the very first one and as i'm going through you'll even notice i've got some duplicates i'll kind of get into that as we go over each of these sections so first this is like a kind of like a downscaled version of a minor planet setup. Let's say you get to your minor planet, you go, uh, okay, all the ore is over on this side here, so I'm going to do my smelteries over here. So you start, start slapping down your smelteries and your docks. You'd probably have quite a bit more than this. Don't worry too much about how they're set up. This isn't a 
completely optimal setup, but it works for what I need. But what I have here is I specifically put down more of the magnets, the plates, the iron and the copper plates, and less of the stuff like titanium, glass, silicon, graphite. Because that's generally how your mining planets are going to look. You're going to have more of these three things. Not always. Sometimes you'll have a planet, lots of stone, you need lots of glass. Sometimes you're going to have a planet, lots of silicon, you need lots of silicon plates. It's really going to depend on what you have, what you're sending out. And so when it comes to balancing in your docks, how many docks need how many spaces, it's going to be completely based on what you're smelting, what you're making, whatever it is. But personally, I almost always have it some way like this, where these three heavy hitters are shared across two, three, sometimes even four different logistic stations. You really want to have enough vessels to be able to send out to all the different places. That's usually what it comes down to, is the actual vessels that can send out the material. And that's why I have it in separate logistic stations. But then some of them, you know, like the titanium, the silicon, I don't repeat them usually because they're not needed quite as much. Maybe in this case, how I have three logistic stations, I have these two here, these two here. Maybe there is a lot of glass and we can repeat it over here and we just slap it down like this. It's uh, very situational and you're going to have to feel it out. But this is just a good idea of how a mining planet might look. Let's pretend we have traveled across the stars and we are on a different planet now. You would not need a new set of docks for a different section of the same planet. Wouldn't work that way. But we're going to pretend this is our factory planet. And on this planet, we're making only containers. Let's say we're only making containers on this planet. You know, when you get late game, you need lots of containers. So as normal, I would have my dock like this. You know, you come to your planet, you pave it out, you slap down some solar panels, whatever you want to do. And then you'll have other logistic stations doing exactly what you want your docks to do. They'll bring stuff in, all your, uh, all your supplies, they'll bring them in, and then they'll send the containers out when they're done. And you'll say, hmm, this looks awfully suspiciously close to what one of these might look like. So why would I not just have my factories here supply and demand remotely instead of having these extra logistic stations over here seems like i'm powering extra things i'm taking up extra space oh. but the more you scale up and the more you have factories the more you have more factories the more you're not going to want to check each and every single one of these factories all over your planet the easier it's going to be just to go to wherever your docks are and say hey do i have enough of this do i have enough of that do I have enough of everything? It's check this, check that, and then you're on your way and you know you're good or you're not. In my last playthrough, I literally got to the point where I had 43 of these purple container setups. If this is two setups here, two logistic stations, I had 43 of these. You do not want to go around and check 43 individual stations for all their, uh, all their resources. It's not ideal, it's not fast. And the last setup might not look like much of a setup. There's no factories going on here, but I'm trying to simulate from the dock perspective what a home planet might sort of look like. Now, I kind of just like slapped a bunch of items into here because this is how my home planets usually look like. It's a mess. You can't, there's no like coordination to what's where. You just have all kinds of stuff coming in, going out, maybe fuel, maybe solar sails, maybe it's some science stuff, all kinds of stuff. Especially when it's early and mid game, your home planet's gonna have all kinds of factories and you're gonna have all kinds of stuff going in and out. And when you got like 30 different items that you're making all over the planet, once again, it's that much easier to check this one place, this one line of docks and say, hey, do I have this? Hey, do I have that? Maybe you'll look at it and you'll say, oh, look, the deuterium's kinda struggling. You'll see it, you'll see it kinda coming in, but you'll see it sending out but maybe a little bit sitting in there and you'll say to yourself, oh, okay, that's a cue to me. I got to make more deuterium. And it's an easy way to keep an eye on everything. It's an easy way to know what's, what's needed on the planet that you're on 
and it's usually pretty simple to say, hey, I don't have this, I gotta find where I'm making that, and I gotta go fix that problem. One little caveat, one little thing that I've kind of run into, especially when it comes to the docs on my home planets, is I'll have something like, a good example is stone brick. Maybe I can find where I already have it. Stone brick. You don't need stone brick for that many uh, like items, like recipe items. You only mainly need it for buildings. The exception to this would be concrete, but we're not even going to get into that. You don't want to build concrete on your home. I said we're not going to get into that. You only need, really need stone brick for like a couple different buildings. Your oil buildings, let's see, the water pumps and also chemical facilities. There's one or two other ones like chests. But the point is, you don't really need something like this for that many different things. And so what might happen is, let's say you're just mining it on your home planet, and you're also using it on your home planet, but then the excess you send through your dock like this. And at a certain point, something like this is not something you're going to need to check up on all that often. And so maybe you're in a different star system, you're pulling in stone bricks, on that on that planet and it's coming from a place like this it's really easy to lose track of where all of these different things are coming from especially when you have a item like this it's very very uh, it, it's used very little it's a very little used item and so if you're not checking up on it on the dock itself it's very easy to forget hey where am I making stone bricks you don't need stone bricks for that many things it's hard to like remember where you're making something like that. And so that's just a kind of it's a kind of a problem I've run into where it's easy to forget what planets are making what. Maybe you're on a different planet, you see the stone brick as a problem, and all you do is you go off and you mine more stone and you make more stone brick. Well the problem now is at home you don't have any stone brick. And maybe you want to make some chests or some water pumps and now you don't have the brick to make it and you're like, hey, what's going on? You're requesting your, your, your buildings on the other side of the galaxy and they're not coming. Well, all you really had to do was you had to go change this, change this, because you had no more on your planet. And you just had to bring it in instead of had it send out. And it happens from time to time where, you know, you're making something on the same planet that you're using it, but you're also sending the excess out and then it runs out and you forget that you need to now start bringing it in. So just something to kind of keep your ear on the wall against for, is that even the saying? I don't think that's a saying, but you know what? I'm sticking with it. Something to keep in mind. But in general, I think docking has made logistics an absolute breeze, keeps all your items together all in one spot. And I hope you found this really useful. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks, guys, and uh, if you found anything really interesting here or have any ideas of your own on how this can be further enhanced, let me know in the comments. All right, for today, that's going to be all. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.